So this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up. A long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. The lieutenant looks around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've seen one of the hardies bang away at it. Remember the dice maker? Then that means... Ah, yes, as the novelty dice maker said. This has absolutely nothing to do with the case, I'm sure. But I do like a nice little connection. But then it went bankrupt. Your skin crawls from making the connection. If that's true, then our cafeteria manager is not going to like it. We should tell him what we found up here, omitting that suspicion. He does not appear to be the kind of man who likes his establishment to be part of a neighborhood ghost story about bankruptcy. It's not a ghost story. It's a curse, and God ought to be made knowledgeable so he could perform counterspells. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, unlike everything else here, are new. Three weeks maximum from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week too. You know, officer. This is so good it makes him forget the whole Kimball memory. This isn't bad at all. It was a good idea to see where that door leads. Commendable work bringing us to this place. It means someone snuck through what seemed like a secret route, behind Classius' room, in the recent weeks. This may prove to be significant. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The souls have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. This print is unlike one left by a regular worker boot. It is not a brand soul. With logos on it, it seems custom-made or old-fashioned. The size looks about the same, actually. They are not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. No, these little horizontal lines are different. They look custom-made to me, or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Still a boot, though. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside, bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around everywhere. You lean closer to the peephole instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions here. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. This is the barred door you tried to kick in before. The door shudders a bit, as though it were laughing at you. Unless we veered off into a folded M dimension, I'm expecting to step out on the roof. We could ask Classia about this route. See how she reacts? Folded M dimension. A reference to the popular science fiction series, In System. Look who's in a good mood suddenly, and read science fiction. Yes. It is quite likely that we will re-emerge on the M-plane. Brace for psychokinetic impact. Or the roof.
Officer, it's a fine day for questions. Yeah? I did not. Mystery solved then. I kept wondering where it led. There may be more to this mystery at some later time. She's holding back. Let's make a mental note for now. A peephole? You mean like a hole in the wall? Yes, looking into your bedroom, miss. Okay. A jitter of fear and disgust moves through her body, beginning from her shoulders and ending in her hips. The cigarette tastes foul to her now. Do you think this is somehow connected to me? Okay. Do you have any way of knowing how long it has been there? Unfortunately, no. But if I were to guess, long enough. The perforation is under the bookshelf on your wall. It should not be hard to cover with some tape. Shit. I don't know. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Maybe the local kids use it or something. I don't know. I'll be fucking covering it up with a lot of tape, that's for sure. Was there anything else back there? Huh. This isn't good. She's straight as a stick, suddenly. She feels like quarry, encircled. Her eyes dart to the door. Okay. I'm glad someone's had fun. Mm -hmm. She's lost in thought. Eyes narrowed. Forehead furrowed. All right. It sounds like the boys would have preferred my saying it did happen. I didn't want to get caught up in this. She is not at all worried the tape will contradict her statement. What does that recording say? We are in the process of listening to it, but haven't yet. She nods, exhaling a dense cloud of cigarette smoke. Six crumbling petals rest on your palm. They're white, a bell-shaped crown. This is the insulindian lily, called Maybells or Lucille's Tears during the Revolution. Girls used to pin these on soldiers before sending them off to battle. This flower is a spring flower, but it's a bit early for that, isn't it? The revolutionaries, so the commoners and the anarchists. White's their color, but the custom started in the suzerain's army, so it held meaning for the king's men too. It's about girls and boys more than sides. Girls sending off boys who are going to their deaths, then also dying themselves in the ruins from dysentery and consumption. It's a symbol of the civil war. Yes, but not this early, not to my knowledge. It looks dried, preserved. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. The petals feel dry and fragile in your hand. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. You push, come on, sir, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Remesha. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. The harbor. That's the Summerfolk Valson crane. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. 
Kill shit. Dogs and chickens, too. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dance of whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your portaria. The tape stops spinning. End of recording. It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. Still. There's more going on here than we know. Corti could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, the one he was talking to. Probably the mountain at the harbor gates. Mr. Right to Work. A village on the Samaran Isola, in South Safre. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. The South Safre conflict is an ongoing proxy war between Grad and Safre. It has been hot for 12 years, with the atrocities piling on, mostly committed by the Grad. Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony. At least to some degree. Officer, it's a fine day for questions. She puts her coffee cup down with a soft ring as the porcelain meets the metal table. Did he? I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. Mm, where did they get this recording exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased. Recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's gonna do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Yeah. That was practically his pickup line. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it Kohali style? He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little kohoi. It wasn't his everything. No, I'm pretty sure he did all those things, and then had to internalize them to keep on living, until they just sort of turn into his, um... What's the word I'm looking for? He was like the Semenese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezut all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. We're all scraping up any happiness we can find, officer. Going around with our little scouring sticks, you, your first love, Mr. Kohoi here. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean. No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip 
of her coffee and smiles. Master Investigator, you just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places, can you? Attaboy, the world's secrets were made for you. They wait patiently for you to uncover them. Can I help you? Another thing. Great. I love those. Why? No, fuck it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know why these degenerates do what they do. I thought we had one good guest in the building. Yeah, well, she's not a guest, is she? What? Did someone mention my name? We were just paying you a compliment and finding out a degenerate from room three nicked the phone line. Everything is okay here. Good thing that guest pays for her stuff on time. I'll forward her the bill and be done with it. Was there anything else? What wall? I'll have it fixed at once. Thank you for letting me know. I assure you, the Whirling does not abide spying on its guests. The colour has drained from his face. Absolutely not! Fuck you for even implying it. It wasn't me. It wasn't my staff. The establishment will look at it and ascertain what it was. Sir, he was only asking a question. It's his job and mine. See that it's covered. Yes, I absolutely will. Sorry, it's been a bit of a day. And now a hole in the wall. Thank you. I'll patch it up personally. Was there something else about the establishment? I hope not. Oh, okay. Well, I do hear you make noise back there. So, good for you. He's really, really holding himself back here. Okay, what is back there? There is no gaping mall. If you don't want to tell me, you don't have to. That's okay. Ha! I knew it. I've always wondered where those machines by the door came from. And they told me there was some kind of pinball thing here too. I knew it. Were there any back there? In working order, I mean. No, I was just wondering if you found pinball machines there. Capitalist plot. The pinball we have in the corner now is broken. I want to diversify the entertainment options. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here, other than the hellish karaoke machine. 
That one's always causing trouble. He should still know. You have to be forewarned about these things. What? Why would you say that? We're at a completely different address from that whole thing. So he knows of the doomed commercial area and its address. He's thought about this. Everyone knows of it. I've been working here for a long time, and that intercom has never been used by the Whirling. It's a sign of the Whirling in Rags not being part of the doomed commercial area. If anything, we're revitalizing this neighborhood. Relax, Mr. Gart. I'm sure there is no doom. He simply wants to share his discoveries with you. Does this look like part of a doomed commercial area? This pre-revolutionary tile work? These high ceilings? The nice rooms? Well, most of the rooms. For 14 years, man. That's how long I've worked here. I've kept this place up through hail and through sleet. Fuck me, if some doom ghost... He's done a fine job, too. Though he's spoken of the place dismissively before, the hostel is actually very important to him. Yeah... It, it's slowly growing on me again. It's beautiful in its own way. Especially for this neighbourhood. I've been trying to keep it that way. Even if it is part of the damn doomed commercial area. Yes, your police skills have delivered. I'm sure you'll get a commendation. Maybe even a promotion. Some real estate management company. They never come around here, just collect money from afar. Honestly, I think some money laundering might be involved. Well, it sure as hell wasn't the real estate company. It was you? You look surprised. What? It's a great name, I know. Cafeteria managers come up with great names, too. It's from a song. Hail, Holy Queen, by the Ateniers. Hail, Holy Queen of the Sea. You're whirling in rags, you're vast and you're sad. Good pick. What about them? One is a basement dive frequented by chain-smoking communists. I can't tell you how sick I am of Kras Mazov and Ignis Nielsen and all those old ghosts. He's hesitating. Not sure if he should share this information with you. Encourage him. The other is a kebab cart. It's very successful in its way, but it's nothing like the whirling. Luck has got nothing to do with it. I need to think about where I'm going to place those pinballs. I have a feeling they're going to help. So, if you didn't have anything else to tell me about my establishment, can we, you know, wrap it up? Yes? Tremble. The time is now. Taola. Time for the show. For... Taola, the hallowed time of fear and disintegration. A countdown has begun. All will collapse on itself. The world will disappear into a single grain of blackness. All sound will be muted. All life will scream. Ulogu Theodos, Xino Zausin, Ipoli Osidien. Echondes Fronisin. Monday morning. The moment you arrived in this reality are the first crack in the sheer face of God. From you it will spread. Yes, you spoke the words of the Palindropos and the houses of Pericarnassus. Items. People, even words, will tumble. 
all will lose its meaning in the coming years. That is why you marked yourself. It's totally also a coping mechanism. So you should be. The world island crumbles at your feet and in the far plain, Palindropos. Perhaps, just a thought, this has something to do with the hangover. The face of the woman fractures. There will be herd killing. We all become vapor. Hi, gendarme. Another rendezvous. Hello, hello. So what brings you here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? Convenient. But what are you doing here? Talking to me? Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. Nothing. That I didn't see anything. Why shouldn't he? What friend? No, I don't think it came up. Muscular, handsome, strong, like one of those military types. Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Oh, uh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely, scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. Sure. Anything else on your mind? You did? And how did you like him? Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> Why not? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He can always return. To his opportunities in Occident, Sir Leclay. Still. His coming and going brings some life to the village. Or is it just money? I don't know. Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. That he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. It is. On Sundays. He has keys. And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. Hmm? What about me, gendarme? Could he be a member of the homosexual underground? Yes, this man is definitely one of the homos. I've seen them homos with my own eyes. Just pointing it out, we're not talking about some kind of cult with members here. You made it up. The homosexual underground? Why, yes I am, officer. Why, do you want to investigate? Oh, it's a pleasure group. A Sabrosa pleasure group congregating in cellars under the cover of night. Saturday night. Sometimes even Friday night. Or Thursday night. Sometimes the congregating doesn't even end. It carries on into our daily life. Oh, we're ambitious. We want to destroy the last vestiges of meaning. The last things people in Rebishol have to hold on to. The true symbols of security. The meaning of man and woman, mother and father, their marriage. Everything will be constantly shifting and moving under our rule. The future will belong to a circus of identities just spinning around, surreal and unreal. You won't even know who you are anymore. Yes, we listen to a lot of disco. Some say we engineered disco to spread our vision of a vertiginous, ever-changing society where all there is is a razzle-dazzle of gold. 
We are going to change the family unit with all this razzmatazz and finger dancing. And with mysteries, of course the mysteries are also of sexual nature, very esoteric. You can't just get into it. You have to be born into it. One is either already in the homosexual movement or forever excluded from it. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for. Who knows, maybe you were homosexual in the past. Maybe all of that has been repressed. I have to say that you do look like someone who might be part of the underground. You have that very distinctive, I can't understand what's going on here, look. Absolutely wonderful. A man like you can figure out his sexuality in a working day. It won't be 20 hours unless you want to enter the heightened realms of the Phantasm Erotique afterwards. It may be 20 hours or more, but that would be on your own time. Bye-bye, gendarme. It's you again. What is it? Anne. He tenses immediately. Chest tightens. Jaw sets. Ready for another blow. That fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishaw. I gave you gold on that tape. Fucking fuckity fucker. And what did she say then? That it's fine. People are supposed to be like that. Yes. In fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? No good goddamn psycho whore. All right. All fucking righty then. I guess it's good then. That fucking... Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawmen? Nah. I know her. She's just a girl. In over her head. Yeah. You're right about that. She takes way too many drugs. Well, it's as they say. You can't do anything with an underdose. Yeah, but I mean... She has an actual drug problem. Not like you. Not like us. I don't think I've ever seen her sober. Nah. Handled him? She got into some stupid shit with that guy. Shit we had to take care of. Yes, yes. We heard all about it. And the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. I knew it. Titus, I knew she was professionally trained by her walk. I told you she was a beauty queen. Yes, Glenn. I know she's a beauty queen. Everyone can see that. Sorry. I already told you. We fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men, too, are growing increasingly silent. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... 
You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her Titus said. Fuck off! This is the petulant rage of someone who's at the end of their wits. That lion scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. On the floor, Bear drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What is this quiet funeral shit? All we need is some beers in us. Bartender, 20 beers for the dock workers union. Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. 100 beers? Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. Convince Titus he's being manipulated. You should know by now. Titus Hardy will never falter. But you know someone who might. Fat Angus, the powerful guy. Mr. All Muscle. The time has come. Put him in the pressure cooker. Just remember it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. Huh? He'll get it. Go on. Got it. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Bring that up one more time and you won't get to write that report. The man's fists under the table are bald. You can tell from his neck and shoulders. He means it. Yes, I understand, Alain. That's your name, right, Alain? You'll kill us. That's what they do in the Wild North. It wasn't that. It wasn't... We just couldn't get him down, okay? That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when... <laughs> Shut up, Angus! Fatty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis, stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. Does he? His closed fist is shaking. It's you who's in control. Let them have their moment. The room falls quiet. So quiet, you can hear Angus wheeze. Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless. Because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you, just give her up. Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Everard. Fine. I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast. You're in. He's all yours. Questions. The lieutenant gives a smile only you can see. He you hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. 
the bullet in his head. Another nod. Cause the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. He doesn't think she did. Or at least he hopes she didn't. Class J came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up, even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> you don't get to talk yet, Chinky. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. We went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. Uh, fucking dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. Tibbs patched the window and the corpse. We hanged. Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. Tibbs, that's short for. Yeah, good man. Bet their father's name, Atticus Hardy. Lucretia Hardy would be their sister. Anyway. You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. The can't show up on police radar kind. There are people after her. From the old, old world. Where she came from. They're powerful, connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hers, you mean? I mean the people after Klausia. Maybe the shot missed. Maybe. It was meant for her. I like that. Been thinking the same thing myself. My dude. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns. Training. Years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Cronell. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do if I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. In a manner of speaking, we had help from another girl. It was her idea to hang him, and I liked it for political reasons. It sent a good message. Fella, you think too much. He's off all right. You're gonna hurt your head. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her, anyway. Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. You do that. Hey, cop, before you go, she, Klausia, came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. 
This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection, but... That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. 